Okay, Ms. Onesto, and if you are new or even familiar with Contact 8, there's a good chance that there's like a cloud of confusion that lingers around this program, no matter how much you use it. So today I'll cover the Contact 8 features that most of you will use. I'll be skipping the more niche features, but don't worry, I will still link some resources below that will cover everything inside of Contact. Let's start with the obvious, what is Contact 8? To put it simply, Contact 8 is a sampling platform that allows you to play virtual instruments, also called Contact Libraries. Now there are two versions available, a free version called Contact 8 Player, and you have the full version called Contact 8, and um, there are some big differences between the two. The biggest one is that Contact 8 Player can only play Contact licensed libraries, while Contact 8 can play any Contact library, first or third party, licensed or not. To find out which version of Contact Library is compatible with, just check out the product page and you'll usually find a badge that will tell you which version you'll need. Some other big differences are that Contact 8 comes with a ton of instruments, synthesizers, sounds, and presets, while Contact 8 Player comes with a very limited sound library. And then of course, there's the price. Contact 8 Player is free, while Contact 8 is $299, which is not cheap. To get it at a better price, there are three things you can do. One thing you can do is wait for a sale. I've seen it as low as half off. You can get Contact 8 with Complete 15 Standard, which is a gigantic bundle of native instrument products at a discounted price. Or you can cross grade from a qualifying third party product for $149. If you're wondering which one you should get, one question I would answer is, what do you wanna use Contact for? If you plan on just using it for one or two instruments, let's say you just wanna play virtual piano and some virtual strings, then I would say with a free Contact 8 player. But if you want to use it to write full songs using a wide range of instruments, then the full version may be right for you. Whether you're considering using Contact 8 Player or the full version, please use my affiliate link down below. These commissions are what makes this channel possible, so thanks a lot in advance. Now let's talk about the main thing, using a single virtual instrument inside of Contact 8. First, open up Contact 8 and you'll see all the libraries you own. And as you build up your own collection, you'll want to use the filters here to help you find what you need. Let's say I want to use an electric guitar. Under the sound type tab, I will select guitar. And uh, there's still a lot of options here, so I'll select electric to help narrow it down some more. And let's even click the brand tab and I'll select native instruments. So here are my results. I really love electric mint, so I will click that. And now we have all of our presets on the right here. If you click a preset once, we can hear an audio preview. <laughs> These audio previews are so useful for browsing through a bunch before you open one up. So uh, let's preview some in here. All right, let's select Celtic Castle and uh, I'll just double click it and now it'll load and open. And now we can play it. And if we wanna see all of our libraries in this view, we can just click the product name here uh, but we'll click it again uh, to get back to Electric Mint. Now, each contact library will look different. Uh, the complexity of controls will vary a ton. Sometimes it will be like Electric Mint where you have a pretty graphic with lots of controls and menus. Sometimes you'll have instruments where there's some visual feedback between the controls and sound. And other times you'll be given complex controls and features that are completely unique to the instrument. So just be aware that all contact libraries are not the same. Cool, now let's say you wanna layer this guitar with the piano. Of course, you can create another track and load up Contact again, or you can layer the instrument directly inside of Contact 8. And it's really simple. It's kinda of small, but all you have to do is click the plus sign under the instrument section, and then select the instrument that you want. I'll pick Noir and then the Pure Felt, and now they are layered. The mix sounds off, uh, so we just balance the mix here. And then to delete an instrument from your layers, just click this X. Now let me show you some quick tips. The first is resize and contact. Sometimes the instruments are annoyingly tiny, so a couple of things you can do is click the bottom right to resize. Or you can click zoom and make it much bigger or smaller. Nice, now something else super handy is opening up the key roll. To do that, just click view again and uh, we'll turn on keyboard. And it's not just nice to see which keys are playing. For some libraries, some keys, they will act like triggers or some libraries will have a very limited range. For example, in Electric Mint, we have a trigger here in green that gives a nice quick pitch bend. And then you'll have these red triggers down here that will switch between different strum patterns. So now you can see why having this key roll will help you navigate what you're playing. Great, now it's time for my favorite tip and that is purging. It sounds scary and intense, but purging a library is the easiest and best way to save on RAM. For example, I'll open up Claire. Mm -hmm. 
And we'll see here that this single library takes up 0.9 gigabytes. Yeah, it sounds amazing, but that is way too much memory. And this is what's happening. When I opened up this single preset, Contact loaded up every key at every possible velocity and round robin, which can be thousands of samples all loaded up and ready to go. Which when computers and external hard drives were slower, um, this was necessary for a smooth playing experience. But if you have a decent computer, uh, I'm using a M1 Mac mini from 2020, by the way. And if you use a solid state hard drive, purging is the way to go. To do that, click file, then purge this instance, then purge all samples, and now, no memory is used. But when we start to play, only the samples that we trigger are loaded. So let's say we play this little MIDI clip. We'll see that we only use 23 megabytes. So we went from at least 900 megabytes to just 23. So when you have several instances of contact in your project, this tip will go a long way and make a big difference. So Contact A has introduced three songwriting tools that I wanna quickly introduce to you. These are essentially MIDI effects that you will use with your contact libraries. Usually uh, I ignore these kind of features in my videos, but Contact A has implemented these so well that I actually think beginners and advanced users will benefit from them. Let's talk about the first one, the chords tool. The chords tool lets you quickly write and customize chord progressions. Whether you're new or familiar to chord progressions, you're gonna love this. To use this, just click the plus under the tool section and select chords. From here, pick a preset from the chords menu. There's over 100 to choose from, which is plenty to start with. And once you select one, you'll see that there are seven chords mapped to the white notes on your keyboard. Then you can just play around to find a chord progression. It's also easy to customize these chords. If you click a chord, you can replace it with another preset chord, or you can randomly get another chord, or you can record your own. There's also some humanized controls if things are sounding too robotic, along with the strum, which uh, is super handy for guitars. You can also click and drag these chords directly into your DAW, so you can further tweak and use them with other instruments. All right, now the next tool is the phrases tool, which will help with finding melodic inspiration. You'll access this in the tool section, and just like with chords, there are over 100 groups of melodies to choose from. There's this cool one I found the other day called Savior, so I will select that. And now these seven white keys are gonna trigger seven different but related melodic phrases. You can use the phrases as is, but if you want to customize it, there are some great controls that oddly make it feel like you're collaborating with contact rather than just using like a MIDI pack. So you can change the length of the loop by dragging on the edge of the circle. You can also rotate and invert the melody to get instant variations. And I had the most luck with inverting. Um, there's been so many times that I've been surprised with the results. And if you click the pencil icon, you can get even more editing tools. And just like with the chords tool, you can export the mini data into your DAW by clicking and dragging that four pointed arrow. The last tool um, I'm gonna show you is called Leap. Um, and there are a few of these types of products around. Arcade from Output is probably like the most famous one. Pretty much just lets you choose a kit that has a curated set of loops and one shot. And you'll use the white keys to trigger the samples. and the black keys that will be used to trigger effects. There's also some macros and even some more effects you can tweak. I like to use these kind of tools to add in bits of ear candy or for vocal chops or for finding a nice percussion loop. Or if I need like a quick background track for a video, Leap or Arcade, it totally does the trick. Leap offers so much depth and possibilities that it really needs its own video. So if you wanna learn more about it, I will link a video down in the description for you to check out. Great, now I hope this dispels any confusion around Contact 8. Uh, one thing I did not touch on was complete control, which if you have a control keyboard from Native Instruments, you'll really wanna consider using. Um, I have a video all about it right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching, later.